So the other day I was contacted by a woman named Lisa Lilly who wrote me on Telegram and said hello. And I was like, hi. And she said, nice to meet you. My name is Lisa, and you? I said, do I know you from somewhere? And she says, I saw you in my nearby suggestion, so I'm talking. Now she says she's from Los Angeles, California, but was in Utah for business last week, and that's how she got my number. And then she says, this must be our fate meeting. Well, how exciting. I asked her what she does for work, and she tells me she's a diversified investor and a lead analyst for cryptocurrencies. And that's when I knew I was dealing with a pig butcher. The pig butchering scam plays out when a host contacts their victim, the proverbial pig, randomly through a wrong number and starts to build a relationship with them. And you may have seen some of these wrong numbers coming through Skype or through your phone and you probably just ignored them. But if you responded, you could have ended up meeting a pig butcher. And they get this name because after becoming your friend and earning your trust, it'll get you to start investing in crypto where you'll end up losing everything. So I'm gonna go as far as I can with Lisa here, but I have to let her earn my trust. And thankfully she hasn't realized the irony of my telegram name, Mike Roch. Mike Crotch! Mike Crotch! Hey, has anybody seen my crotch lately? <laughs> so we get to know each other a little bit. I tell Lisa I'm a retired old fart and that I like to play golf. We talk about our kids and our careers and this conversation goes on for like two days with the two of us just feeding bullcrap to each other. But let's peel back the curtains and show you what's really happening behind the scenes. This Lisa isn't living in LA. She's actually living in Myanmar in Southeast Asia where she's forced by her employers to message lonely Americans every day. Oh, and by the way, this Lisa isn't a she either. Lisa is my friend, Wynn, one of these employees who finally broke character a few weeks ago after trying to engage with one of my partners. I then got to know Wynn, and he tells me that when he took this job, he didn't know he was going to work for a scam. He thought he was going to be doing sales, but then he quickly discovered what he was involved in. My job is to make friends with strangers in the United States. After becoming friends, I invite them to invest in cryptocurrency. The reason I do this job is because they never explained in advance what this job was all about. But I'm going to tell you what this job is all about because now I have access to these agents' computers and I can see them in action. They're provided with the lists of hundreds of numbers that they're told to go through and message individually. They have scripts with prompts to initiate the conversations. And once the conversation begins, they use tools like ChatGPT and Google Translate to sound educated and authentic. And they're provided with a library of pictures of the one woman they all represent, Lisa Lilly, who turns out is a Chinese model named Freya Fang living in New York City. And apparently there's been plenty of scammers using her likeness to scam others because she's got a pinned post on her Instagram page stating that she's never once asked anyone to invest in cryptocurrency. But these scammers are forced by their leaders to impersonate her day in and day out. Southeast Asia is a current hotbed for pig butchering scam centers that are staffed by thousands who are trafficked into cyber slavery. There's been reports of beatings or withholding of food to get employees to comply. There is pressure in the workplace and we are only allowed to go outside twice a month. Our working hours are 14 hours a day. There are punishments in the workplace that include squats, push-ups, and running around. And Wynn hates his job, and he knows that what he's doing is wrong, but it's currently the best opportunity that he can find in a country ravaged by the ongoing civil war. This work is led by Chinese criminals. They operate in Myanmar because they know they won't be prosecuted when they return to their own country. But now he's opening up to me in hopes that he can increase awareness about pig butchering and keep his boss from hurting more people. So eventually Wynn, I mean Lisa, asked me if I'm on WhatsApp to see if we can chat there. But what's really happening is I'm being passed on to the boss who will take this to the next level. This entire conversation up to this point was simply to vet me and see if I'd be a good candidate for the ultimate slaughter. So I soon get a voice message on WhatsApp. Hi Mike, I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you to be friend in here. What the crap? Who is this? Wynn tells me that it's their translator and to continue playing along. She's also been recruited to send voice notes from time to time to make the relationship more believable. Lisa says, it's nice to be friends with you here. We can have more exchanges here in the future. And boy, do we. I ask her if she travels much and she says she stopped traveling since the pandemic. 
Wait, wasn't she just in Utah for business like last week? Isn't that how she found me? But she covers her tracks saying my job allows me to travel to many places and it can also bring me a good profit. And I'm dealing with a very smart person who's been in the crypto industry for five years and even knew about Bitcoin 10 years back. Wait, so she knew about Bitcoin 10 years ago, but she's only been into crypto for five years? These scammers are so sloppy, but remember, they're relying on Google Translate and ChatGPT to generate their answers. But Lisa is smart enough to know that she can't just come right out and ask me to invest in crypto right away. She's gotta be my trusted friend first. So for like a whole week, she's just texting me throughout the day, talking about her wonderful life of riches. She tells me about her visits to the spa she owns and tea time with her friends and the shopping trips with her daughter. One day she just casually sends me a picture of a Patek Philippe watch while she's at the mall and says, what do you think of this watch, my friend? And I say, looks expensive. And she responds, it's not expensive. This Patek Philippe watch is quite affordable at only $58,000. Oh, only $58,000, very affordable. But then she actually buys it. She then says, I think through your continuous efforts and study, you can also buy it in the near future. And here is where things get very interesting. She says, I think the next time my crypto analytics team analyzes a good trading node, I can bring you along for a hands-on learning experience. Because when you haven't done hands-on learning, it's hard to understand when I tell you. Hands-on learning is the best way to understand and learn. Well, the next evening, she introduces me to her website, xtcom.vip, and tells me to set up an international exchange account. Except xtcom.vip looks strangely familiar to xt.com, which is an established crypto exchange site. XTCom.VIP was registered literally the day before this conversation took place. But I go along with it and she teaches me how to deposit Bitcoin into my trading account. I click deposit and then I copy the Bitcoin address. Then I need to go into Coinbase to buy Bitcoin. Then click send and then enter the address of my XTCom account. Once it's there, Lisa will help me invest it. Except I'm suspicious if that wallet address is really linked to my personal account. So I go ahead and I create a second account and go to the deposit money and what do you know? The wallet address is the exact same. Nobody gets their own account on this site. Everybody here is just throwing their money into the same place, Lisa's pocket. And Lisa tells me to just start with a small amount so I can see how my trades do, but this isn't a real site. The people behind it will just edit the HTML to make it look like the victims are making big gains. And convinced that everything is going great, victims will then be pressured into investing larger and larger sums of money. And this is known as fattening the pig before the proverbial slaughter when the scammer runs away with everything. This video is sponsored by Aura and their findings estimate that 12% of Americans who have used a dating app have experienced pig butchering. And that's more than doubled in the last five years. A great way that you can keep yourself safe from scammers is by using Aura's Identity Theft Protection Services. Their all-in-one app includes a privacy assistant that removes your personal info from data brokers and people search sites that can sell your info to identity thieves and scammers. How else do you think that this call center acquired this list of numbers? Aura also includes a VPN that keeps malicious websites from scraping your data, a password manager, fraud alerts, an antivirus and a $1 million identity theft insurance policy to cover eligible losses that may result from identity theft. Best part is they have a 24 seven customer service center to help you get the most out of their tools. I think you should try it out for two weeks and see if it's right for your family. You can start your free trial at aura.com slash pleasant green to stop threats before they strike. So yeah, I'm not gonna be putting anything into this exchange. Instead, I'm going to call out Lisa for her lies. I say, okay, I will need to do it tomorrow. I'm having a sleepover with my granddaughter tonight. And she seems a little annoyed that I'm not taking this more seriously, but she can wait. So the next morning comes and Lisa sends me a typical wake up text. Good morning, Mike. Today's a sunny day. I went for a morning run in the morning and I just finished my shower. Sure you did, you clown. But I said, oh good, I have been spending the morning with my granddaughter. She says, hi. And then I go to f.freya's Instagram account, which is the same place where Lisa has been stealing pictures, and I find a picture of her daughter. And Lisa's response is, what a cute kid. What, she doesn't even recognize her own daughter? So then I send her another picture. Here she is with my daughter. Then Lisa responds and says, how did you get my picture? And I said, what are you talking about? I said, how did you get a picture of me? And I said, that's my daughter and granddaughter. She says, no, I am not your daughter, nor is my child your granddaughter. I don't have time for this. And that's when I just decide to call and get to the bottom of this. 
but she doesn't answer. So I say, can we talk on the phone? She says, of course, I thought we could have a video call. Oh, okay. I say, let's do it. But she says to wait until the afternoon because I have an important meeting later. Oh, okay, sure. She's probably going to go track down that translator in the office and get her to talk to me. Hi, Mike. But before our call, she writes me to say, my friend, my crypto analytics team called to tell me that there is a nice trading note in 30 minutes and the profit will be between 10% and 30% of the principal. I think it'll be a good hands-on learning experience for you too. Oh, I get it. She wants me to hurry and get me to invest my Bitcoin because I'm onto her bull crap. So that's when I just decide to start a video call, which she declines. But then she calls me. Hello, Mike. Hey, is this Lisa? Yes, I'm Lisa. Hey, Lisa, where are you right now? Yes, I am in the office now, so I, I'm not in... Hey, Lisa, what state do I live in? Where did you reach? And that's when Lisa says, I don't think we need to have this conversation anymore. I think of you as a friend, but you make me feel like I'm cheating on you. And I'm a little pissed right now, so I say, maybe you shouldn't be stealing F. Freya's pictures and pretending to be a woman, you big dumb idiot. She says, I have over $11 million in my contract account. Do I have to lie to you? I say, you're still lying. Then I start finding every picture that she sent me so I can confront her with them. I said, I thought this was your spa in LA. Why is it tagged in New York? Then I say, you went shopping with your daughter a year ago? Eventually she realized that there was no use in defending her lies and I got blocked. And I need to be careful because being too disruptive might cause him to take it out on the employees that serve him. And they are just as much of victims as the people that they're calling. But I don't have to worry about him taking out any aggression on Wynn because at the time of this recording, Wynn is out and he's safe. And he's finding legitimate ways to make a better life for himself. I'll never do this job again. I'm now doing the simplest and safest job for my goals. If fewer people will be scanned because of my actions, I'll be happy. And you have been worth it. And even though I've been blocked by Lisa and even though Wynn is gone, I'm not completely gone. And I can see real-time conversations happening with victims and I'm going to do all I can to keep them from meeting the real Lisa. Hey, if you know someone involved in an online relationship, make sure and share this video with them and warn them, don't fall for this. And I'll see you later.